Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. I meant to just transition you over here. And instead, I stopped recording. OK. Um, all right, so if, if step two, OK, so looking at the slides, our first step is NOBR2 produces NOBR2. And then, and this is the fast step, OK? And then our slow step is NOBR2 plus NO yields 2 NOBR. OK, so if you look at this, all right, and we know that the second step is the rate determining step, then we would write the rate law as this. Rate equals K times NOBR2 times NO. OK? Um, but there's a problem with that. NOBR2 is actually an intermediate, OK? Um, and so you can't write a rate law to contain an intermediate because the intermediate is not going to be in the overall balanced equation. So what you need to do is you need to go back to your first equation and look at like, well, where did NOBR2 come from? It came from NO and BR2, right? These two things produced that one thing, right? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to replace this with what they were equal to, what it was equal to from the first reaction, which is the concentration of NO and the concentration of BR2, which means if we rewrite this, our rate law equals K times NO squared times BR2. That's where the initial rate law came from. That's why it looks to be termolecular, because um, there is a process. There are multi -step, multiple steps in this um, reaction. However, when you break it down that way, your rate law would include the intermediate, and you're not allowed to do that. So if your um, slow step is not the first step, you need to be careful that you're not including the intermediate in that rate law, okay? Which basically sums up the rest of the slides, but I think they make it look really confusing, okay? So um, I'm going to, like, skip through the rest of that, all right? Um, so then, like, again, page 597, okay? There's a sample exercise on that page. It says the decomposition of nitrous oxide, N2O, is believed to occur by a two-step mechanism. Okay, they ask you to write the equation for the overall rate law. And then I think they ask you to write, oh, to write the rate law. Okay, so you have N2O produces N2 plus O2, okay? And that's slow. Then you have N2O plus O produces N2 plus O2. And that's fast. Okay? All right. So if you look at those, um, they're t first of all, the first question is write the overall equation. So in other words, how does this balance out? And I feel like I wrote something wrong. I did. There's no two there. Okay. Um, so the O would cancel out, and what we'd be left with is 2N2O on the reactant side produces 2N2 plus O2. Okay. Um, and that would be our overall equation for question A. Question B says we'll write the rate law. Okay. Well, keep in mind, your rate law is determined by your slow step. So the first step is our slow step. And remember, they said if the first step is the slow step, you can use like the stoichiometry from that to, as your order. So rate equals K times N2O. And that's that, okay? 
Um, so I would encourage you to try um, practice exercises one and two under that as well, just to see how you're doing with that. Um, and that should help you, okay? Um, the other thing I'm going to say, and let me look real quick. I know that I'm putting a lot on your plate, but I do think it would be helpful for you to practice a little bit. So I would encourage you to try 66, 68, 70, and 72 in your book, okay? So 66, 68, 70, and 72 um, in your book. You could even do 74, okay? I will do all of them and like put them on the chapter 14 um, assignment. If you get to it, great. If you don't get to it, at least look at the work that I did um, to make sure that you understand where I got those answers from, okay? But I will say those problems go kind of quickly, so I think you could probably spend 15 minutes on them and get it. Um, the last thing I'll say is just to run through catalysts real quick, okay, um, keep in mind catalysts make reactions go faster because they decrease the activation energy required, okay? So for a catalyst, you're always going to see the hill um, is lower for a catalyzed reaction than it is for an uncatalyzed reaction, okay? Um, because catalysts change the process, it changes the mechanism that the reaction occurs, which is why like they're present in the beginning and they're present in the end. So they don't get used up, they're not reactants, they're not products, like overall, they just, like they participate by reacting and then getting produced later so that instead of having this simple mechanism, you have a more complicated mechanism that makes the reaction go faster, okay? Um, there are two types of catalysts, or there's homogeneous catalysts and heterogeneous catalysts, okay? What that means is that they're in the same phase, so like they're both liquids, or they're both aqueous, or they're both gases, or they're both solids, okay? Uh, heterogeneous means that um, the catalyst is in a different phase, state of matter, than the reactants, okay? Um, you might want to like read up about it in the Princeton Review book or read these few pages on your own. There is usually like one AP test question related to catalysts where, you know, if you have time, you might want to look into it. Okay, you discussed enzymes um, in bio, so, you know, keep in mind that enzymes are catalysts, okay, um, and that's that. All right, so that's the rest of chapter 14, okay? I will post these for you, and you can um, watch them at your convenience between now and Monday. Thanks.